Yeah, today I'm going to be talking about my potato cannon. And uh, while it's not the best potato cannon probably in the world or on the internet, uh, that does have some nice features and it's really easy to make and hopefully I can inspire someone. Um, I'm going to start with the business end here, uh, the, the exit point for the potato here, the, the front of the barrel. And as you can see, I have a coupler on the end and really uh, this is more decorative than anything. Uh, I drilled some holes in it. Maybe it acts like a choke or a muzzle brake, you know, I don't know. Um, but it protects the end. So when I'm loading the potato, which I'll show you in a little bit here, I, I don't damage the barrel. On the end, the loading end here, the breech load, it's a breech loader. Um, as every potato can should have, I, I've sanded down the outside edge. So this edge is sharp, so you can slam a potato nice and cleanly in. You're looking at the same pipe here and here. I routed out the coupler so that I could push the pipe all the way through before I glued it. Um, and this is just because uh, it works really well for a screw-on type and I can still breech load. Um, with a screw-on type, you can make any barrel you want and attach it to your gun as well. You might also notice here I got a little X. And uh, what this does is that helps me when I go to screw it on. I can screw it on faster because it lines the threads up and I can start screwing it in right away. All right, here we have the chamber made out of regular 4-inch Schedule 40 PVC. Uh, you'll see the female thread adapter here for the barrel. Um, I got a coupler, the PVC pipe, and a clean out. Um, on this end, I want to point out, you can see here, uh, you know, the whole chamber is uh, removable from the stand uh, or carriage here. And uh, these are just wood dowels, um, oak I think. And uh, it's important to note here that I did drill into the coupler, but there's plenty of coupler left because this pipe goes like all the way in here, uh, at least to this point. It's not quite a half-half coupler. Um, so, uh, you know, the, the pipe has plenty of seal. I only drilled a hole into this and then I did a cold weld, uh, epoxied this onto here. And, it, and it's very stable. But yeah, I just wanted to point out, it does not go into the, the main chamber because you do not want to uh, weaken your chamber. Um, for the electrodes, you see these here. And uh, that's just regular screws through the base. Um, there's all kinds of nuts and stuff so I can adjust them and tighten them and adjust the spark gap inside the chamber. Now, uh, you'll notice it is in the middle of the chamber, which is the weakest part of the chamber. However, I am, I'm only using propane and not oxygen mix, so it, it should, it definitely, it handles it just fine. Um, also, I have it in the center because uh, you get more bang if your spark's in the center. And if you think about it, um, your spark goes off and the f flame goes both directions. So you're burning in both directions, you get a bigger bang. If you're only in one direction, you get a slower burn. It takes longer to burn it off, and it only starts on one side. Okay, we're looking at the rear of the gun here. I actually have it tipped forward so we could get some light in here. Maybe you could see it. Um, but yeah, this is a, a, a sewer clean out um, made for a four inch pipe. And uh, you know, we have a screw on cap here. Um, and when you would see in here, I have a, a, an old PC fan in here installed. And uh, that's just hooked directly up into a nine volt battery. Uh, here's the switch. See, it turns on. I have it set so it actually blows this way into the gun. Um, when I'm shooting this, that's pretty much running all the time. Uh, it's doing two things for me. One, it's uh, mixing the propane and the air together. And it, this makes a huge difference. Um, if I forget to turn this on, I'm only getting about half power out of it. So uh, it, it mixes the propane and air, keeps it mixed until you fire. Uh, the other thing it does is after you fire and you remove your uh, cap here, that uh, fan takes just a few seconds to totally blow out all the uh, blown gases, all the carbon dioxide, gets fresh air back in here, you know, blows it right out the barrel. And, you know, it does this within seconds. So usually, as I say, when, I, when I'm operating the gun, this fan is running all the time. I just have a battery holder and switch here on the stand. And uh, you can see I have a little hole where the wire comes in here to the fan. And uh, you don't really need to, unless you're going for some record or something, you don't need to worry too much about sealing every single hole. Um, this gun is by far not airtight, and but with the explosion speed, um, it really doesn't matter much. Um, so yeah, there is a little hole there, and I, I do not have a, a silicone or anything, but it's very tight. I had to really squeeze the wires through, so uh, that's how the wires get into the chamber for the fan. All right, we're going to talk about the propane system now. Uh, this potato cannon is what you might call a metered propane cannon. Basically, what that means is I dump a specific amount of propane into it to, so I can get the same bang every time. 
Uh, of course here I have a, my propane tank, just your basic uh, plumber's propane tank. And I got the valve here and um, I took off the air mixer off the front of it, or off the top of it here, and attached directly a hose with a hose clamp. The hose goes directly to the regulator, which we're going to talk a lot about in a little bit. I have a valve, my metering pipe, which is right here, another valve, and then an elbow that dumps it uh, right into the chamber approximately by the uh, right by the PC fan. Um, I want to know here too, you want to do this through the coupler um, because uh, unlike uh, the little bitty holes for the like uh, the spark gap here, uh, this is a bigger, quite a bit of bigger hole um, so you don't want to really weaken your pipe too much. So if you can drill this through the coupler into the chamber that's much better. Um, this uh, area here too is not airtight. I, I did the best I could but it, like, like uh, like the wires going to the PC fan, um, it's not airtight, doesn't have to be. Um, also I have a giant hose clamp here to really clamp it on and yeah this thing's on solid. I could carry the gun with this if I wanted to. Onto the regulator. Basically you want to experiment as best you can to see when you, how much propane you need to add to get your biggest bang. Um, I cannot remember what the target percent is. It's uh, like 15 percent I think or, or maybe even less. I can't remember. But um, I miscalculated. Um, so uh, actually I should have made my metering pipe bigger, uh, maybe a, like a, a bigger diameter pipe. But um, what I found out is I have to generate 120 PSI inside my metering, metering pipe of propane and that dumped into this chamber is the right ratio to get my biggest bang. And, and I just discovered that through trial and error. That's where the regulator comes in. Um, regrettably, uh, propane even on a warm day may, maybe gives you 80 to 90 PSI directly. Uh, so what I have to do is basically do two dumps of propane of 60 PSI each to get my 120. And the way I do that is I got my regulator set for 60 PSI. I open this valve, close it, open this valve, dumping the propane that's pressured in here into the chamber. I close it again. I open this one again, close it again, open this one, close it, and that dumps the second metering. Uh, and doing that I get just the right amount and through trial and error that's what gives me the biggest bang.